Hi, thank you for watching my video. I'm going to be talking about the alien story today and the afterlife. I've been to the afterlife. I went there because of love. I talked about my astral projection video that I left my body because of the love I felt for the girl who I was with. And this was the exact same case, only... Um... I wasn't with the girl, I was just by myself, like, just feeling love for her. Like, in my room by myself, just feeling love. No missing, no sadness, just love itself. And, um... I remember I was, like, laying in my bed, like, feeling this love for this girl, like... It was, like, so strong for some reason in this moment. And it was, like, the only thing I wanted to feel was the love that I have for her. Like, I didn't even want to feel... Like any sadness or you know, regret or missing her, you know, nothing like that. It was just pure love, like enjoying like my capability of feeling pure love for the person who was meant for me. And I was just feeling that, like laying in my bed. And I wasn't falling asleep or nothing. I wasn't like dozing off. I just remember I, I was like laying there, like on my bed, you know, feeling you know, love inside of me for this girl and about like 10 seconds like I went from laying in my bed to just like like I basically like I astral projected or astral projected but I I teleported like into like another dimension like while I did it like I wasn't like astral projecting in my room I like astral projected into the the afterlife because like I was feeling so much love it was like like, I went to the, the final place that you're supposed to go early, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm just, I'm sorry. It's, it's so fucking, it's a complicated story. Let me just think. So, when I... When I was feeling the love for this girl, just laying in my bed, about 10 seconds later, like, I appear, like, I drop down, like, you know, like, felt my feet land type of deal in this really sunny, grassy field. And in this really sunny, like, grassy field, there was, like, a few trees surrounding it, but there was, like, an open area of just, like, some green, green grass. And... This area of green, green grass was in front of this ginormous building. Like, there was this big, tall building that looked kind of like... It looked kind of like a, like a cathedral, like a... You know, like... Yeah, like the Vatican or something, only, like, more modern and, like, different. Like, it didn't really look like something from Earth, you know? It, it was... So I saw this big building in this green field... But the, the big building was, like, really tall, and it was, like, so tall that you couldn't see the top of it. Like, it just kept going up and up and up and up and up. Like, it was supposed to be, like, simulating, like, the entrance to the house starting off in this grassy field. And the building was supposed to be simulating space. Because, like, in the afterlife, you kind of, like, create, like, whatever you want type of deal. Like, where I went was created by me, my wife, and my friends and family who were all meeting me there. And I'll explain that later. It's like, I gotta, like, there's there's so much to this. Like, just just wait. And so, when I first got there, there was, there was people in this, this green grassy field. Like, there was, there was real people. They were all real people with their own personalities. It was all realistic. I was hyper conscious this entire time like I was super aware of everything and and this entire time I was just feeling that love for that girl like I was just feeling this pure love inside of me and it, it feels so warm and wonderful and comforting and it's just it's the best feeling in the world in the universe really like there's, there's nothing better than that feeling and that's just what you feel the entire time in this place and that's just you only receive that type of love from everybody who's there too there's just nothing but love in this place. There's no evil. There's no sadness. There's no other emotions. 
any other emotion that you feel, you'll feel for a split second, and then the feeling of love will reassure you that there's, you know, no need to not feel love in that situation. So one of the group of people who were out in that field, uh, I was attracted to them. Like, I just, like, walked straight over to them. And there was, like, this group of, like, six or seven people. And they were all, like, uh, they're all, like, ah, oh, come on, ah, uh, ah, nah, don't be like that, blah, 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 you gotta. They were, like, encouraging her, but they were kind of, like, disappointed in her at the same time. They were all, like, kind of just, like, somewhat talking disappointed to this this blonde girl. Like, it was a girl with blonde hair. And I remember right as I saw them all, like, kind of, like, harassing this girl or, you know, just kind of, like, bothering her in a way. It just wasn't necessary. The only thing you really, like, feel there is love. So I was just, I came up to her, and I put my arm around her, and I, like, pulled her in close to me. And I said to all of them, I was like, you guys should leave her alone. Like, there's no reason not to just feel love here. Or something like that. I said something like that. And... I remember they just looked back at me and they gave me like this look like what I said and what I was feeling was so powerful and what they like they they looked at me and I'm just saying now like everybody there was telepathic like fully like speaking inside your mind um like someone would say a sentence to you and you would hear like, inside your mind, their whole mindset. It wouldn't even just be that, that one sentence, like... One sentence would be, like, really, a like, an infinite amount of sentences. So, like, you wouldn't have any questions after somebody said something. Like, someone says, like, oh, go grab me that. And you'll be like, what? Like, what do you mean, go grab that? But, like, in the afterlife, someone says, go grab me that. Like, you would understand their whole mindset and understand what they're really trying to say. And, like, that's that's what they were doing to me when they were giving me that look. They were giving me, like, this, this telepathic, like, communication. And it was, like, at that point, I knew that they were, like, there because of me. And I was brought there because of love, the love that I have for this girl. But they, they looked at me like they could, like, they wanted to say something. but But they told me basically, like, like, they couldn't say it. Like, there's only so much that I could have seen there and known there and remembered there from, like, my past lives before I would have, you know, like, kind of just completely ruined myself on Earth. Like, I wouldn't really be able to get, like, a normal job and stuff and function. Like, it's already getting, like, s sorted to that point. <laughs> it's like, life just feels so crazy now, you know? But, um, yeah, so, like, they kind of just, like, gave me that feeling that, like, uh, they were all, like, my friends and family from past lives and they all recognized me and they wanted to see a lot more and I could just see that in their face and I could kind of like understand it with the all-knowing ability like the all-knowing has to do with telepathy too so it's hard to explain but yeah like the telepathy is super fucking strong in the afterlife like it, it's really cool it, it's so cool like like you can just understand so much from just such a s small amount of words being said and you just understand everything because the all-knowing ability, like, like you just know. Like, you know everything that they're trying to say and you understand, like, it all. Like, you know the whole truth. That's, yeah. And, uh, I remember after I kind of just, you know, put my arm around that girl. Like, I felt every, it was so, I, like, I felt her, like, physically, like, like, I felt my arm around her and stuff, and, like, I felt, like, how soft her arm was, and, like, I felt her, I felt the love that we both share, like, I felt that feeling, and it was just, it was so pure, because it was like everything was physical, but it really wasn't, like, we were just, like, taking on, like, a form, like, in a, I don't know, but like, just, like, a, a physical form that wasn't physical, it was just kind of, like, energy, but it feels physical. But it's, yeah, like I said, it's, like, different from astral projection. It was, it was just, like, kind of, like, we were there, but we, everything was more, like, dreamlike. Um, we went, we went into, like, the bottom of the building. 
like the cathedral looking building that went all up, 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 up into the sky. And I remember we went up it, like, I don't know if he like teleported to the top where we were supposed to be going, or like I just kind of like lost track of time. But I ended up with everybody else except for that blonde girl at like towards the top of this building where if you looked at the, the windows, if you looked outside, it was just, it looked dark. So that told me that like it was in space, like it was supposed to be like simulating a building, this ancient building with all this stuff inside of it, like going all the way up, like into space. And it was, it kind of looked like, um, like somewhere you would like have a party only it wasn't really like recognizable. Like everything looks so like, I want, I don't want to say futuristic, but like alien or not from this earth. Like it looked, it looked like ancient architecture mixed with modern architecture that you wouldn't recognize like nothing in that room was really like recognizable and so everybody was up there and I remember it was it was like a party it was like a reunion like a gathering type of deal and I, I was having like full-blown conversations with these people with their own personalities and stuff and it, it was so it was so amazing really like it was like I can't really describe how amazing it is just so, just so many like wonderful people, and the only thing you feel is love the entire time, and you don't gotta worry about anybody, you know, lying to you or trying to hurt you or deceiving you. It's just a really great place to be, and you only feel the best feeling in the universe. And so, this is the alien part, by the way. So when I was talking to all these people, like in this top of this building or whatever like kind of like we're having like some type of party thing going on everybody talking i remember this this it looked like a like a big koala with really big brown eyes like realistic eye like just like a human's eyes like like just like a human's eye only really big like the this koala thing just like appeared like next to me and he was kind of like whoa because like i saw him and i was like, like i got like kind of scared for a second because i was just like what the fuck like is this weird koala alien looking thing just like came out of nowhere after just talking to nothing but like people who looked like humans so i was like Phew. first thing i was like whoa but he was like whoa and he like when he did that like he looked at me and like telepathically like he he told me that everything was okay and he also like gave me like the vibration of nothing but pure love so like it, everything just all this whoa feeling just turned into like ah oh, ah oh, you're just a good person like everything's good here like I don't gotta worry like, it's a reassuring feeling and I remember like right after like he appeared I like I tried like petting him like I tried petting the koala I tried I tried like petting his fur or whatever and he was like no 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 don't do that don't do that <laughs> it was really funny and like he he like telepathically like told me that it was kind of like disrespectful because he wasn't a pet like, you don't go around, like, petting other humans, you know what I'm saying? Like, that'd be weird as fuck. <laughs> but that's kind of how it was, and that kind of, like, offended him. And, like, I kind of felt a little bit guilty for that. I was like, oh, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you fucking little koala thing, like, I don't know. But he was the most telepathic and the most psychic out of everybody there. Like, he, he was telling me things. He was giving me, like, all this information about, like, why I was there and stuff and what everything was. And eventually he said, it's really good to be back here again. And I was like, yeah, like, why is everybody back here again? And he was like, because it's your anniversary. And that, that kind of like gave me like the idea already of like what was happening. And I was like, the anniversary of what? And he was like, you and your wife. And right as he said that, it was like, like, I knew everything that he was trying to say. Like, I knew that, like, I was there because of the love that I was feeling for my soulmate. And I saw her. And I know who my soulmate is. And he, after he said the anniversary of you and your wife, he, like, kind of, like, told me to look over. And I see that, that blonde girl, like, walking up where, like, the entrance to that room was. Like, she came up late or something like that. And she was, she, she started like walking towards me and 
right as right as that was happening, I, I asked him inside my mind, I was like, is, is that her? And he was like, yes. And it was like, he was telling me some other things, like, like, that was, that was her taking on a form of one of her past lives, and that was supposed to, like, spark, you know, my past memory. Like, it was supposed to, like, like, I recognized her when I see her, not only as the girl who I love, but someone from the past, but I couldn't fully recognize her, kind of like how I couldn't fully recognize those other people, or couldn't fully recognize the alien, but I, but I did recognize him, it was like, I know you, but I don't remember why I know you, or when I knew you, that alien might have been from a past life too, and stuff, but that, that blonde girl was the girl who I love from a past life, like, taking on that form in the afterlife, and as she was walking towards me, like, like, she looked similar, only she was, she was, like, a little bit more skinny and stuff, she had, like, a little bit of a different face, and, but she, like, she kind of, like, walked the same, she kind of walked similar, and she was walking towards me, and there was, like, nobody else here had the same aura, it was, like, her aura was just, it was, it wasn't even, like, colors, it was just, like, like, everything around her looked like she wasn't supposed to be there, like, she, like, like, the universe was revolving around her or something, it was just, you, you saw all this movement and energy around her, and it was so beautiful. And she she kind of has that aura in real life, but when I was looking at it in the afterlife, it was it was so much more like like visible and like powerful looking and beautiful, and it was so amazing. And I remember like when she was walking towards me, and I was realizing all these things. Um, I started like thinking too much about, like, everything on Earth, and when I started thinking about everything on Earth, that kind of, like, s slipped up the feeling of love that I had, because I was, I was starting to, like, feel, like, mixed feelings that weren't necessarily bad, but, like, confusing, and, and then that's when I woke up, and I woke up in my bed, and after that moment, that's when all this time travel stuff started happening way more, like, I was predicting the future, like, every day and shit, that's when I made the succubus video, right after this happened, the succubus happened, and that's when I started to, to make the YouTube. That's when all this stuff was happening. Like, so many things have been going on. And that ever, ever since that moment I came back from the afterlife, it's just been accelerating. Like, like insane. Like, every day just gets more and more complicated. And man, I don't know. I've had such crazy things happen lately, but... That's my favorite thing that ever happened because, like, I can't have the girl who I love. So seeing that let me know that, like, I'm going to have her eventually. Like, even if I live this whole life and die, I'll have her in the end because she's my wife and she's my soulmate, like, the other half of me. And um, it just feels really great to know that and not you know miss her anymore or feel sad it's like the only thing I want to do is just love her now and that's how powerful love is no matter where you are like you'll always be brought back together but you don't it doesn't even have to be like in the physical like I went to the afterlife to see my wife cause she didn't want to see me on earth for some reason she doesn't recognize our love and she doesn't remember our past lives. And I don't know. I, I don't know why. I don't know why the universe wanted to show me the truth so bad. You know. It really just made me look forward to dying more, like, not in a bad way. That's really all it did. It didn't really, like... I don't know. Yeah, I just... It, it, that's just what I've been dealing with lately, is just... 
wondering why I can't have this girl who I love and if I'll ever be with her. And I've been trying to, you know, make things right with her and it's not going too well. So I hope things change and I hope things get better. Yeah, that's my phone's about to run out of time, so 